The question is that the member for Marichi Dawes Amendment Number 1 be agreed to, for which a division has been called. Members are reminded that they must be in their allocated seat. Will members reporting votes please rise? Will the government whip advise what the government votes are for the ayes or noes? Uh, 48 noes, Mr Speaker. Will the opposition whip advise what the opposition votes are for the ayes or noes? 32 ayes, Mr Speaker. Will clerk report the other votes of uh, other parties and members? Queensland Greens, two noes. Independent member for Noosa, one aye. The result of the division is ayes, 33, noes, 50. The question is resolved in the negative. The question is that clause 19 as read stand part of the bill. Those that opinion say aye. Those against, no. I think the ayes have it. The question is that Clause 20, as read, stand part of the bill. I call the member from Richardson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, I wish to address the issues that the minister slandered me for, because I think it's most unfortunate it was more about personal attack than it was about the issues Order. that the Auditor General Order. had raised. Um, and, Order. and I think point that's always why it's so disappointing. Pause the clock, please. Minister, what is your point of order? Um, I debated the question. I take offence. Um, that was really unparliamentary language. So the minister takes offence to those comments. Uh, Member from Richardson, will you withdraw? I, I withdraw. Mr. Thank Speaker, you. I want to address the issues that have been raised by the Auditor General, and I thank also my colleague, the member for Clayfield, who quoted a section from the Auditor General submission, uh, and uh, in, in particular the concern that had been raised by the Auditor General about requirements. For, the, for a parliamentary committee to give consideration to the government, the GIR. And I'll quote this, including these requirements in the legislation could be perceived or interpreted as giving the GIR a greater weighting than I believe is appropriate. It could also give rise to a perception that our basic rate of fees should in practice be linked to the GIR, a government policy requirement. This would go against the principle on which Professor Coldrake's recommendation is based, that is, allowing the Auditor General to independently set the basic rate of fees. And he continues, I acknowledge that the Auditor General must remain accountable for ensuring the fees charged for audit services remain reasonable. In addition to the proposed new requirement for the committee to approve the basic fee rates, this will also be achieved through the continuing existing practices, including establishing the QAO's annual budget, the five yearly strategic reviews of the QAO, which typically include an assessment of the reasonableness of our audit fees and the efficiency of the, of the QAO, and communicating our proposed audit fees to the chief executives, boards and audit committees of our clients in the audit plans we provide to them at the commencement of our annual financial audit. So I, I was quoting from the Auditor General, but apparently that is an anathema for the Minister who chose instead to attack me. And I get it. It's easy to go and attack the person, uh, slander the person, rather than look at, the issue, look at the issue. Order! Now, I support parliamentary committees having, Order, members. having the ability, uh, as they would continue to do, they would continue to do uh, with the Auditor General to have oversight. But what I don't support is the back doorway of a Labor Treasurer being able to get his way by uh, bringing about pressure on Labor members on some committees, which I think is a genuine concern. And so when I saw the submission of the Auditor General saying, in respect to the GIR, that is the government Right. This would go against the principles on which Professor Coldrake's recommendation is based, that is allowing the Auditor General to independently set the basic rate of fees. I thought that was a reasonable concern to raise before this House. But apparently the Minister's answer is to attack me. That's the, the easy option, time has expired. but it's not appropriate when uh, we're standing member, for independence of the member Auditor from General. Can I, um, can I just ensure that you've actually moved uh, Amendment Number 2? I just think you might have forgotten to move I that move beginning. Amendment Number 2 standing in my name. Circulated your name. Thank you and very much. I note the member for Marucci Dawes Amendment Number Two proposes to omit Clause 20. The question is that the member for Marucci Dawes Amendment Number Two be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Those against, no. no. I think the noes have it. The question is that Clause 20, as read, stand part of the bill. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Those against, no. I think the ayes have it. 
The question is that clauses 21 to 59 as read stand part of the bill. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Those against, no. I think the ayes have it.